Hi, I'm Lou with another episode of My Car Story. And today, I'm with the historian, Bob Joint. Now, Bob's too humble to brag on himself, so I will do that for yeah, him. You go ahead, Lou. Thank you. <laughs> The Pebble Beach judge, the Amelia Island judge, one of the youngest judges ever at Pebble Beach, am I correct? Well, not exactly, not anymore, how's that? Look? Well, at, at the time, so, <laughs> yeah. but the point is, this man has seen amazing cars. He is a historian. When I sit with Bob, I usually just sit and enjoy the story. You're gonna too. So if you like what you see, I'm gonna tell you up front, subscribe to the channel, make sure you hit the bell so you can see every car, Bob, joint. Bob, my pleasure. Lou, good to see you again. Always a pleasure with my friend Bob. So with that being said, Bob, what did you bring today? Uh, the car today is a 1926 Lincoln uh, Model L Sport Roadster with a custom aluminum body by the Lock Company uh, of New York. And with that being said, the car you're going to see, I'm just going to take this over here. Let me show you what it originally looked like. It originally looked like that. That is before the car was restored. And here, these are some original photos. And take a look at this artwork that is period correct. That Now, Bob, how many of these were originally made? They built 101 of these cars. They sold 101 in 1926. It cost $4,500, which was a lot of money at the time. Uh, but it is amazing that they would run an expensive ad like this and they only sold 101 of these sport roadsters. So they ran this wonderful ad for 101. How many cars do you think, Bob, are still left like this? Uh, from what, what I've been able to determine, around five or six of them are in existence, uh, which is really quite a low survival rate. And the, and the real problem is that when World War II came along, this was a a 15-year-old used car, and they really weren't practical for use in, in the 1940s during World War II, and almost all of them were scrapped to get particularly all the aluminum out of both the engine and the body, scrapped and for the war effort. And Lincoln started, I think you shared, in 1921. Yeah, the, the first automobile was introduced uh, by the Lincoln Company in 1921. Uh, in 1922, the Ford Motor Company took over uh, the Lincoln Company, which had been an independent company. Uh, and, of course, as we both know, Lincolns are still a, a luxury brand here in the United States. So with that being said, let's take a look right now at our car while Bob continues to tell us of the history. And I'll just let you take that in for a moment of that. Now, Bob, you were sharing with me. Tell me about the motors and how the Lincoln Company started. It all started, what, in 1843? Well, it started in 1843 with the birth of Henry Leland. And Henry Leland was the man who founded the Lincoln Company. But he, Leland, during the Civil War, was a master machinist in Springfield at, a, at the Springfield Rifle Works. And he learned uh, precision uh, machining uh, working as a, uh, as a rifle manufacturer during the Civil War. Uh, he moved to Detroit, ultimately set up the Leland Falconer Company, which was a, a major main, a machine tool company. Uh, in 1900, they started building engines for Oldsmobile. In 1903, Leland said, well, why am I as well build my own car? And he, he brought out, believe it or not, introduced the Cadillac. Um, and this is what I find really fascinating, is that Henry Leland is responsible for both the Cadillac Company and the Lincoln Company, the only two luxury manufacturers left today. Uh, now that's amazing because he was a motor engineer. He was basically an, a, a motor and, and chassis uh, engineer. He was a machinist though. He really, uh, I think what why these car companies survived is because they had a reputation for beautiful machine work and everything. He was a per total perfectionist. He would not tolerate anything that wasn't perfect. And if you, if you machine parts perfectly, then the cars are dependable. And dependability was a huge factor in the, in the teens and the 20s uh, because many of the cars weren't particularly well built and they didn't hold up. Uh, his cars, while they were very expensive, would hold up. You got what you were paying for when you bought a, uh, a Lincoln. Um, Why the name Lincoln? Because well, his name's not Lincoln. Yeah, his name is not Lincoln. Uh, he, he, I'm gonna keep looking at the car while you continue to talk to me. He originally, uh, set up the Lincoln Company to manufacture airplane engines during the World War I and then after the war he decided well the war is over I need to now manufacture automobile uh, I can manufacture automobiles 
I love the detail in this. Look at Lincoln is embossed in the lenses on the headlights on this car. Uh, again, the kind, those are the kind of details that are... And you'll notice this is says Ford Lincoln Detroit. This is after, of course, after the Henry, uh, Henry Ford had purchased the Lincoln Automobile Company. Uh, the Greyhound was the symbol of Lincoln, and this is the first year, 1926. This is the first year that they put the Greyhound on, on their cars. And, of course, that's uh, to indicate that the car is fast and lithe and just a, a very a speedy, comfortable uh, piece of machinery. Now, um, as I say, Leland, really, he set the standard uh, for... Uh, come, on back really with the, me. come on back with me, Bob. I want to show the front of your car while you're okay. sharing your story. I think Leland really, uh, as I say, being a machinist, he really set the standard uh, for excellence. Now, the, the engine itself is really a very complex engine. It's a V8 motor with 358 cubes, uh, 90 horsepower, which was a lot of horsepower in 1926. Uh, but it has internally what's called a fork and blade uh, rod system. Can we take in, a look at the side of the engine? Yeah, we'll take, let's it? take a look. The engine is... Um, and all I, of this is nickel. This is not yeah, chrome. All of the trim on the car is nickel. They had not invented chrome plating in 1926. The first chrome plating came in around 1927-28. So whenever you see an antique car with, with chrome plating on something 26 or earlier, it's wrong. This, but I love the nickel. Notice how rich it looks. It has a little soft finish. It's almost like a satin finish. Yeah, it looks great. Uh, and every part on the car, every uh, brightwork part is nickel plated on the car. And this car was one of the Hera Collection this, cars. This car came from the Hera Collection in Reno, Nevada. Um, Mr. Hera owned, uh, at one time, 1,500 cars. And this wow. is, he had the number 790 on this one. Now, it's interesting, he, of the 1,500 cars, he had only about 50 of them that they did what is called a gold restoration. And a gold restoration meant that the car had to be absolutely perfect. And this is one of the gold cars, mm. uh, one of the 50 gold cars that they did. Um, and it's, it's absolutely, it's, it just astounds me how close uh, to correct and original every single detail is in the car. And now, the reason why he had this one as a gold car, there's special meaning for that. He, the, the reason he wanted, first of all, he searched for years for a 26 Lincoln Roadster, and he couldn't find one. Finally, he found one in, at the Jack Passy Collection in the um, uh, Fresno area. For gas? That's for gas. In the wintertime, okay. when you're starting and it's cold, uh, the vacuum, here's the vacuum system. This one here. This is the vacuum system, but what you need to do if it's really cold is you need to feed gas directly into the cylinders. You open this up, you turn this knob, and you pour gas straight into the, the cylinder. So, I mean, uh, again, it's pretty amazing. Oh, that, gas shot for the car. Yeah, it's a little extra a booster for the car when you're trying to start it when it's cold. Uh, the number of the car is right here, 38830, which is the they started at 1 in 1921, so this was Lincoln number 38,380 or, or 830 after, from the start 1921. So by 1926, they had built that many cars. As I say, the internals of the engine are fork and blade, very complicated, but it gives it more horsepower. This was considered the fastest car that you could buy pretty much in 1926. Um, amazingly enough, they actually had a police flyer special that they sold Let's to sell. This side. Let's take a look at the other side. Yeah, they, they had a, fly, a police flyer special which they sold to police departments, which is amazing that the police departments would have a Lincoln, but they, wow. they did that because quite often the bad guys, the gangsters, were also driving Lincolns, and the only way they could catch them is if they had a Lincoln. Well, of course. So, they actually had a police special that they that based again based on this chassis. See, it has an air cleaner. The car, the carburetor. This is really 
difficult, but it's a V8 motor. The carburetor is down inside. And the exhaust is right and here. And the exhaust is right here. The exhaust is here. Which comes here. Which comes here. Yeah, and you can imagine that you might have a few vapor lock problems. Plus, the problem is servicing this. It's hard to get at that carburetor because it's down inside the banks. But this was typical, both Cadillacs and Lincolns, and really most V8 engines in the 1920s were set up this way. Distributor out in front, a uh, large generator, starter. It's a starter generator combination, and, uh, and then a big water pump down there. Usually I'd start it later. Can we start it now? Sure. Because I see we got the mechanicals right yeah. here. Yeah, let's start her up. And uh, am I going to have any problem with this? Will this shake, or will this hold? Will this hold? The... Should be fine. Yeah. And show us how before we before we start there, Bob. I know I'm giving different directions. Show me this uh, uh, inside here. Oh yeah, this is uh, again a wonderful indication of the kind of restorations that the Hera Corporation was famous for. They had, it had a tool set for the car, and then this is an extra tool set that they gave the driver if he was having problems. Here we go. Now take a look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? That's crazy. And again, this took a tremendous amount of research on the part of the Hera Corporation and Museum to figure out what was supposed to be in here. Uh, and, and they figured out this is exactly what was in here originally in 1926. Wow. And there's actually, can you pull that out one more second? Yeah. There's actually a little map. Yeah, and there's a little, this is a holder for your uh, owner's manual. Holder for your owner's manual. Yeah, owner's okay. manual, which I have it in the back. Okay, now. While you're doing that, I'm going to open the other side just so I can show. So here's our wonderful handle. So when you open that. Yeah, you open that. So let me just do a couple of things. Let me show the, our pedals. This and, is the... And there's also under here, you can see you open that up for the you gas. You have to open this valve up. This. To, you open this valve up. You close it when you shut it off, usually for any time at all. But you open it up. Well, you just closed it, didn't you? I just opened it, actually. Okay, all Because right. I so, hadn't so closed it. So goes, it. it goes the opposite way? Yeah. Okay. So now it's open, and the, and the vacuum tank is... Here's the bottom of the vacuum tank. Okay, so what is this? That is a footrest. A footrest. This is the this is the starter up here. This starter. is the accelerator. Accelerator. And um, clutch on the far side and brake on the clutch center. Clutch and brake. And then in here you have a. This let me, is. Let me a, show that for just a second. Delco. Delco Electric, which is of course part of General Motors. This is a lockout for the ignition. If you lock it out, it's an anti-theft thing because you need to move this up. In order to start the car, if you lock it out, so we got out, ignition there with the eye. If you lock it out, you so you can you yeah. can't so a thief couldn't steal the car. Plus, this it also has a lockout for the transmission. Wow! As an extra thing in case to to keep it from being stolen, the car. That's amazing. Isn't that amazing. So this is a handbrake. That's the handbrake. It's a handbrake with a thumb press on it, and obviously your shifter. What is this di dial here with a light on it? Is that an add-on? This is. Uh, this no, this is a, the map light. No, this one. That is, believe it or not, this was an accessory. The Harris figured this one out. Wow. This is an it. They, they had so a an, time period correct yes, water pump this is, range. But, well, what happened in 19 up till 1925? They had a motometer water gauge on the on the top of the radiator cap. Yes. They did not have a Greyhound. In 1926, when they put the Greyhounds on these cars. Then there wasn't room for a, a temperature gauge, so they made this add-on, this add-on thing, for a temperature gauge. And what is this button for? This is a button to control an electric fuel pump for pumping fuel up into the vacuum tank. And the this light is, actually this, comes on if it gets this, too hot. It tells me if it's pumping. Oh, okay. you have to be very careful. Electric pumps are very dangerous around vacuum systems, and it's only to be used when you're pumping the car up in the spring. Got it. And this is this is clearly a watch, and this is your adjustment yeah, for the watch. That's the adjustment for the clock and. The car, you'll notice it has 20, it has 2,799 miles since it was restored, and it was restored in 1970. Wow. The restoration was finished in 70, so the restoration is almost 50 years old now. And I know you drive this one. Yeah, I do drive it. 
You want to start her up? Yes. All right. I'm going to move the throttle down a little. I'm going to run the spark control down, retard the spark. And let me just show that real quick. This is retarding the spark. This is, I'm running the throttle down a little bit just to help. How do you like that? Starts like a Lincoln. Starts like a Lincoln. shown the back yet so I will. Got me to open the rumble seat? Oh, I would love to see the yeah, rumble let's take seat. A look open. At the rumble seat. Now you were sharing that the Lincoln name became the Lincoln name because the Lincoln name the reason for the Lincoln name on these companies is that um, uh, Henry Leland's hero in his life was uh, Abraham Lincoln, President Lincoln. He was the really the first president that he ever voted for. This is how old Leland was. That's what amazes me. We're talking about a man that really was from the Civil War time. And so he named the company after President Lincoln, his hero. Now you have to climb up onto these little steps. Okay. This is how you get into the rumble seat. Let me show you doing that. So here's a step. There's a step and then another step. Here's a step. You... And even a key for the seat back then. And you have a key to, to open this. Tell me about this leather too. Yeah, isn't it gorgeous? This is a Spanish grain leather. And this is a, what the Hera collection determined what was in this car originally. It's a, as a Spanish grain. I love these. Look at this. This comes up so that you're armrests. These are armrests to keep you from marring the paint on the wow. car. And you'll look and you'll see you have one on your side too. Isn't that great? The wonderful details. That's isn't that amazing. Isn't that amazing? That is but it's amazing. just to keep your arms so you're not getting body oil on the wonderful finish on the Lincoln. That's amazing. Isn't that great? But this is how you got into the car, under the rumble seat, is you had to step up over all of this. So let me have you step off for just a second. I want to show yeah. an overall shot of the car. Okay, I'm going to try to get this key out. Go ahead, you do that. Actually, I think I'm going to close this one. Okay. And the trunk in the back is just that, a trunk. That's a trunk. Uh, let's see, we have some difficulties here. This was a California car, so we yeah, got the correct plate on it. California. Yeah, I have some difficulty. I'll I'll let you. Forget too. I want to show one other picture here. Bill Harris' uncle was this gentleman here. I'm going to move that so we can see that. Bill Harris' uncle. Bill Harris' uncle was the one who was had this car originally. You can see he is there in an original shot with him. And one of the things that happened there specifically is he talked about that he wanted to go to Bill to go to the prom and he said instead of taking your car why don't you take this 26 Lincoln and that's why this was one of the golden cars that he had. Bob let's shut that hood for just a minute All I want right. to show the car from the side with the uh, seat open. Uh, I'd like to share a little story about the whole history of the car and the restoration. Of let's the do car. that. Close this up. We'll take her for a little drive if you want. 
I will do that as a separate video. As a, okay. As an additional video. I think we got time for one of five 1926 Lincoln rides. All right. Now, let me give you a little history of the of Mr. Hera in this car. Uh, Mr. Hera grew up as a young man in Hollywood. He was absolutely car crazy. And in 1926, he was a senior in high school. He was 18 years old, a senior in high school. He had an unbelievably beat up old Chevrolet Roadster that he had customized. He had put all kinds of doodads and spotlights and stuff, but it really is a pretty crummy car. And he had a beautiful date for the prom. His uncle, who lived close by, this is in Hollywood, his uncle, who almost looked like Clark Gable in the pictures, his uncle said, you know, kid, your date is not going to be impressed with that crummy Chevy Roadster you got. Why don't you take my brand new Lincoln Roadster to the prom? And that's, that is, and this is exactly the car that Mr. Harrow wanted to duplicate. When he became a car collector in the 1960s, he started searching for a 26 Lincoln. He wanted to reproduce exactly the car he drove to the prom. And the uncle was still living. Uh, they, they acquired this car. I just showed that picture too, yeah, so go and, ahead, keep and, going. And, and he acquired this car from Jack Passy in California yeah, after searching for years and years for a 26 Lincoln Roadster. And then they conferred with the uncle as to figuring out exactly what the colors were of the car, of that original prom car. His goal was to duplicate the prom car. He had a really, a, he, Mr. Harrow was very sentimental about that and he wanted to reproduce that car. Uh, when the car was finally finished, the restoration, the uncle said, well, is there anything you're really missing here on this car? And he said, I happen to have the original late Yale locks that, that locked the spare tires down. That was, they were missing. They couldn't find it. They were absolutely thrilled. So actually, the car from the prom, the real car from the prom, the parts of it are right here. These are the Yale locks from what? 1926. Look. Those are the real prom car locks oh that came from the uncle. Now, when the, isn't that on, and the, has the, I have the keys crazy. for them. Again, everything nickel plated. Um, when, um, uh, after Mr. after the car was restored, um, Mr. Hera, who of course had a jet, he has a private jet, flew his jet out to Hollywood, picked up the uncle, who was in his late 80s at that point, Brought him out to, uh, to Reno, where they drove this car around and just, you know, sentimental, sentimental, uh, or sentimental discussions and talk about the good old days and driving that beautiful Lincoln Roadster. And, they, and, and it, as I say, Mr. Harrow was very sentimental about this, and uh, and his uncle, of course, was thrilled uh, to see uh, again his 1926 Lincoln Roadster or the duplicate of his 1926 Lincoln Roadster. And Mr. Hera, for the rest of the every year until the uncle passed away, finally around 90, when he was around 90, Mr. Hera would fly him to Reno every year. They'd take this out. Uh, Hera loved driving this car. As I say, imagine a man with 1,500 cars. A friend of mine, Skip Marchetti, was the uh, director at the curator at the Nethercut Collection, uh, but he originally was working in the restoration shop and actually worked on this car when it was being restored. But he said, I saw Skip last year in California, and he said that this car, he saw it down in the shop quite often getting prepared for Mr. Hera. He, Hera would call, I want to take the Lincoln Roadster out. So they'd all rush around, get it all tuned up, cleaned up, and off Mr. Hera would go. He just loved driving it. So anyways, it's a neat, neat story uh, about why the car looks exactly the way it does with these colors. Uh, and and it's, really, it's really a neat story. But all of these cars have a story. All of these cars have a history. It's just quite often hard to find it. But in this case, uh, we know a lot of the history about this car. Bob, what a treat, again, for those who are viewers, let alone myself, to always sit with you and listen to the amazing history and leave these legacies of these great cars. Bob, thanks for being on my car store. Lou, thanks for including me. Uh, nice to see you, as always.